Okay, so this video is option C, fresh water for IB geography. And the syllabus point is attempts at flood prediction, including changes in weather forecasting and uncertainty in climate modeling. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the difficulties in predicting flood, um, in predicting floods. Intensity of the rainfall in the drainage basin um, can vary. Antecedent weather conditions such as rainfall leading to saturated soils previous to the flooding event can lead to maybe more um, high peak discharge. Changes in the drainage basin themselves, that could be human interference, urbanization, um, channel modifications, obstructions to the flow of a river, changes to the cross section of a river that could be natural or human. Um, also, the soil moisture can impact it because that impacts like the amount of water that can be stored in the ground. And then if there's more permeable surfaces, then that can mean that there's possibly a, um, it will result in a lower peak discharge and a larger lag time. Sediment in rivers and reservoirs also uh, can impact the like ability to predict a flood because that can impact on like the magnitude of the flood okay so here's an attempt of flood prediction which is the global flood monitoring system so the general description of it from nasa is basically it's a nasa funded experimental system using real-time multi-satellite precipitation analysis precipitation information as input to quasi-global hydrological runoff and routing mod okay honestly this is like a bit much, but it's basically using satellites to predict flood um, events. And okay, so basically with this, users can determine when flood water might engulf their communities. You can see waters receding, rising or flooding, it relies on data from NASA's Earth satellites, uh, combined with also a land surface model. So it's using a combination of tools to predict, which is very, it's like, better than using just one thing obviously and there's also some um kind of partnerships here with the red cross and the un world food program to like coordinate any type of flood response that might be necessary then we have weather forecasting so this is the application of current technology and science to predict the state of the atmosphere for a future time and a given location they use data from the current state of the atmosphere, such as temperature, humidity, humidity wind, and wind direction, wind pre ugh, precipitation, and meteorology to, de <laughs> to determine how atmosphere evolves in the future. Information is gained from the observations, and that's used in conjunction with the numerical models, most recent forecast for the time that the observations were made to predict meteorological analysis. The process is difficult due to climate change and a degree of uncertainty and lack of knowledge. Okay, now we're going to move on to climate modeling. And there's a lot of text here because I did take this from my notes because I thought it was all quite like helpful. But I'm going to kind of try to summarize it. So climate modeling is an extension of weather forecasting that focuses on changes over decades rather than hours. So it's like more of a long term measure. And data is collected through these methods. So climate models use equations to represent the process and interactions that drive the Earth's climate. The models are based on the same laws and equations that underpin scientists' understanding of the physical, chemical, and biological mechanisms going on in the Earth system. Since the world cannot afford to wait decades to measure, to, bruh, to measure the accuracy of climate model predictions, scientists test a model's accuracy using past events. If the model accurately predicts past events that we know happened, then it should be good at predicting the future too. And the more we can learn about past and present, the more accurate the models will become. So this is very good obviously it's like innovative and everything but climate scientists must account for temperature fluctuations wind patterns ocean currents land surface characteristics and much more so of course that comes with some level of uncertainty but models measuring smaller areas with higher resolu resolutions actually produce more accurate models obviously because they're monitoring a smaller area they have to kind of take into account um less factors to some degree as it's on a smaller scale yeah.